Hey guys, welcome back. Today I thought we'd take a look at this ANEG mini multimeter from Banggood. Uh, this thing is $5 USD. I paid uh, around uh, almost $7 Canadian. And this is not a review video, but it is a first look. I'll give you my first impressions. We're going to put it through a couple tests. And really, we're going to find out how bad could a $5 meter possibly be. The answer is very bad, but is this one. So let's start with first impressions. Um, the leads. The leads don't give me too much confidence. Um, there's no ratings anywhere on this. Uh, it does look like they are four millimeter bananas, so they should be compatible with other multimeters. And uh, the probes here are a little small. They're definitely not rated for anything. They're not, um, they're not particularly sharp but uh, not bad. I mean, again, don't forget, this is a $5 US multimeter. Uh, they also go in kind of rough. So I don't know if that's because it's making a good contact or because it's just not designed properly. They do like kind of click in sort of like that. Another first impression thing is this thing is absolutely tiny. I have a measuring tape here. So it is roughly 100 mils across the long end. That's uh, just under 4 inches there. It is roughly 50 mils in the width-wise. That's just under 2 inches. And depth, it's kind of just under 20 mils, 18 mils or so. That's like uh, 3 quarters of an inch. So this thing is very small. The casement seems a little cheap. Um, there's a little bit of wobble, but overall, it's it's actually not too bad. Like you can't really complain too much about that. Um, this click knob here is actually very positive. It gives me a lot of confidence, so that's a good thing. It's easy to grab onto despite its tiny size. The only uh, other thing, really, for first impressions, is it requires a two-thirds A or a 12 volt, uh, what's it called? Yeah, 23A battery. So if you have these locally, that's great. I had to order these from Amazon. I had to get 10, but the 10 cost me like nine bucks. So under a dollar each, that's acceptable. But when you figure how small this thing is, it's clear why we can't use sort of a you know, nine volt battery. This thing is giant. This thing is absolutely tiny. And tiny is kind of why I wanted to try it. A cheap tiny meter is good because the best multimeter is the one you have with you. So it's, it feels okay. I, I don't mind it. And the display is actually quite nice. It's kind of big. I can read it. It's really nice. So today's tests, we're going to do a couple uh, voltage measurements. We're going to do a couple of resistance measurements. We're going to do continuity. We're going to do a little bit of current testing. Although the current testing doesn't go very high. Looks like 200 milliamps is as high as it'll go. That's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Um, the uh, transistor tester, I don't think we're going to bother. Neither is capacitance. And anything like this 200 volt range, the 500 volt range in DC and AC, I'm not even going to bother. This is not cat rated at all. So I don't even think there's a fuse in here. And especially since on the back it says um, to prevent fire, install fuse with amp volt rating shown. So 250 milliamps at 200 volts, 250 volts. So I'm not even going to bother. If you're buying a $5 multimeter, do not stick it into high voltage. Just don't. Simple as that. So how are we going to start? Well, we're going to start in the voltage range. And uh, for that, I have this guy. This is in, what is it again? It's an, oh, I have it here. AD584LH. I have the specs here. This is on paper what these specs should be. So it should be 10 volts plus or minus 5 millivolts, 7.5 volts plus or minus 4, 5 volts, uh, plus or minus 3 and 2.5 plus or minus 2.5 millivolts at 15 volts 25 degrees C 
Right now in this room, it is about 18 or 19 degrees C. It's a bit lower, but we are feeding it with 15 volts. Not from a battery though, from a um, variable power supply. Look, this thing should be more precise than this. This does come from, um, you know, China, and so does this. But if we get anywhere near the correct voltage, that should be good enough for, for this test because really we're just seeing if this thing is usable. I wouldn't use this for super precise measurements anyway, but maybe you automotive guys or something to keep in your glove box might be a good idea. All right, so let's hook up the common, hook up the volt. It is right now set to 10 volts and this has been warming up for about 20 minutes just to make sure it is at operating temp. And here we go. So zero volts right off the bat is a good sign. Uh, it has a little gold contacts here. So I'm just going to try pressing on it first. Actually, you know what? I'll just slide it in. So I get uh, 9.97. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit of LCD. A little bit of bleed on one of the characters there. But 9.97 is what we're getting in the 10 volt range. And let me just check that with a second meter because I don't know what's wrong if it's this or this. I'm going to use the same leads. So again, this is not super high quality either, but um, kind of can kind of rely on things if you get multiple results that are, yeah, 9.96, 9.97. So I'm pretty sure this thing is off. Either way, that's a pretty good result. Undo that. Take this guy out. Okay, so not too bad. So already, if something can tell voltage within 0.1 volts, um, it's probably worth the five dollars to be honest. But let's uh, let's go further down. So I'm gonna take these out. I'm gonna drop, take out these two jumpers, switch them to the 7.5 volt range and away we go 7.47 7.48 starting to think we might drop um, 200 millivolts or sorry uh, uh, 20 millivolts in these leads here it's possible we got one digit sticky a little bit there but we're gonna tear this apart after and just make sure it's not a problem with that but yeah, that's that's respectable. 7.48. I mean, any reasonable person would agree that that's 7.5, especially if this isn't your main multimeter. That's great. Let's move it down to 5 volts. Try this again. 4.98, 4.99, that's pretty good. I'm starting to think we really are dropping uh, to 20 millivolts in the leads here. And honestly, if it's just the leads, it's really not a big deal. This is more accurate than it has the right to be. About 10 years ago, a $5 multimeter would just probably explode. All right, 2.5 volt range now. Yeah, look at that. Again, 2.48 volts. That is damn close. That is really close. Too bad it's too high for the Yeah, it's too high for the 200 for the the 2000 millivolt range, but maybe you can try to get this LED. If I probe the the voltage drop on this LED, I might be able to grab that. Oh yeah, here we go. So it's dropping uh, 1.750 volts. So this thing is this thing is usable in the voltage range. Yeah, that's that's really nice actually. Uh, let's see if we can uh, set up another circuit and try the even lower voltage drop. So I built a, a resistor network for another video, and. I decided that I'm going to try to test these tiny little wires here to see if they have a voltage drop with this um, multimeter. So basically what happens is when you have relatively high current 
going through a relatively thin wire, you're actually going to drop some voltage because that thin wire's resistance becomes important. So I'm going to see if we can actually measure that right here. So I'm actually going to go from, uh, you can't see it, put it this way, see if this is warming up here. We have 5 volts um, and uh, 600 milliamps going through this. 600 milliamps, not necessarily a big load, but we're going to see if we can read something. I'm going to go right from the power supply unit, where the 5 volts should be coming out, right to this wire here. Uh, it should be dropping something. It's going out of range for the 200 millivolts. How much are we dropping in my wires here? So let's see. Here to here. So it's picking up 350 milliamps. And I can probe over here. Oh, look at that. My crocodile clips are actually dropping most of that voltage because really between the positive terminal here and my crocodile clip, I'm dropping uh, 7 millivolts. I'm going to drop it down to the more sensitive range. Uh, over here. Yeah, look at that. 7.2, 7.1. Yeah, 7.1, 7.2 millivolts. This is actually pretty impressive. You're looking at uh, voltage drops that are statistically insignificant at 5 volts, really. That That's really impressive. 7 millivolt drop is detected through this little multimeter. That's great. And uh, let's see. These are starting to get warm now. Let me try to remove these, and then we'll check the ohm range for the low ohms. This is the most challenging part of measuring current, I mean uh, resistance, because it's down so low that the lead resistance will actually be picked up. So let's put these together. So just the leads by themselves, somewhere around, let's see if I can get them in the groove there, 0.3 ohms of resistance. Let's see if we can read this. Now this is uh, 6 ohms uh, altogether, but I think last time I measured it, I got uh, 7 ohms out of it, out of another multimeter. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was 7. I'm just going to pinch down hard on here, trying to let my fingers go. So I got 8 ohms, which is, uh, which is possible because it did heat up a bit. Yeah, 8.8, 8.8, so about 8 ohms resistance. Let's check with another multimeter, just because maybe it won't be super accurate, but if two multimeters agree, then that kind of leads some credence. Uh, two, press hard. Look at that. 8.7, 8.8. So actually, these two multimeters agree. So really, I would say that this multimeter is just about as accurate as this one, but I paid 20 some bucks for this one and um, $6 for this one. That's pretty impressive. All right, let's find a couple other things to measure the resistance on. So I have a little bit of a torture test here set up. So I've got a bunch of resistors. They are 1%. I have no way of really checking if they're 1% accurate, but we have uh, 10 ohms, 100 ohms, 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, and 10 meg. So it gives us a good range of stuff to test. And um, honestly, if you can come with anywhere close, I'm sort of impressed. Uh, I have 1 ohm resistors too, but as we saw, like the lead resistance is like, you know, 0.4 ohms. So probably not worth it. So let's start with the uh, 10 ohm. I'm going to try to get that in range so you can see. 10.1. So it's reading a bit low or the resistor is a bit low. Now with the 100 ohm. 97.3. So again, it's bringing us to the correct ballpark. 
Oh, I'm out of range now because this would be a 1K. So I'm going to go up a range. Man, 990, 991. So if it's 9 ohms off of, of 1,000, that's within 1%, isn't it? It is within 1%. This would be 10K, so we've got to go up a range. Okay, that one is quite a bit off. That's 3%. Hard to say if it's the resistor or the multimeter. We'll repeat the test with a, another multimeter. Uh, this would be 100K, so i got to go up. That's definitely within 1%. That's not bad. Um, 1 meg. This one shouldn't read here. Nothing. Okay, a bit off, but I don't know again if it's the meter or the resistors. And that's too high. The 10 meg is too high to read. Now, just for complacency's sake, we should check another meter. I haven't vetted these meters, but... Uh, Certainly, I use them a lot, so it should be good. It'd be nice to know at least. Oh, it looks like I broke some of my plastic off there. Probably from using alligator clips. All right, so here we go. This one's auto ranging. So let's start from the bottom where you can see. And I think I'm going to prop it up a bit too so you can see a little bit easier. So here we go. It should be 10 ohms. 10.2. What's the contact resistance? Wow, that's almost dead on. Next one should be 100 ohms. Okay, see, 98. I feel like we measured something similar. The other one. There we go. One. Whoa, that's a really right within the spec there. Next one. 9.91. That's exactly what we got in the other one, I'm pretty sure. 101K, 101.2. There should be a 1 meg right over here. Uh, that's pretty close. And this last one here, 10 meg, 10.6. That's within 1%. So the little multimeter may be a little bit inaccurate in some ranges, but... Man, for $5, it's doing a very good job, I have to say. I still can't really believe that it's that close. Like, it's really close enough for government work at this point. All right, let's try a current test. Now, uh, 10 ohms at 5 volts. I think it is too high. 10 ohms, I think, will be too too high for this multimeter. So let's skip 10 ohms and go right up to 100 ohms. All right, let's go 100 ohms, should be 5 milliamps. Or is it 50 milliamps? Getting my math messed up here. It would be 5 volts divided by 100. Should be uh, one, two, uh, 50 milliamps, I think. Yeah, makes sense. 50 milliamps. And that's what we read. Next, we're going to switch down to a lower range because this will be um, a, a thousand, should be half a milliamp, or no, one milliamp. Five milliamps? What am I saying? Oh, yeah, no, five milliamps. That's right. So, four point. Eight, nine. Sorry, math on the fly is not great. Next range. There's half of a milliamp. Next range. Oh, we're getting down very low here. I think we're getting into the uh, lead resistance. We'll go into the micro. Fifteen. 
50 microamps. Is that what that says? One meg. <laughs> Four, five, five microamps. And this should not even register the 10 meg. No. So this thing does pretty well. So the only thing left is continuity. And I think this is the biggest letdown of this multimeter. You see I touched that? But you didn't hear anything. Oh, that's because it's in current mode. There we go. See how how long it takes? So that's a bit disappointing. It does take quite a while to make noise. And it looks like it'll pick up 10 ohms as continuity, but 100 ohms does not. So I wish it was more snappy. Look, if I scratch around like this, it's not even going off. So that part's a bit disappointing. But other than that, this multimeter is pretty good. All that's left now is to take this apart. And that's a good time for me to use my new screwdriver set. So on the back here, we've got two Phillips screws. I think they're number one Phillips. There's really not much to it. It looks like a blob. There's a little trimmer pot there, a little buzzer here. Let me get you in for a little closer look. Soldering's a little bit crusty, hasn't really been uh, cleaned up too much. There's a, a diode here, which I believe is input protection, but uh, that's about it. There's seems to be a little fuse here, a little PCB mounted fuse, but I wouldn't rely on that to uh, protect your stuff too much. Three other screws. We're going to check the back side here. And I have had this apart once. So I believe that's what's going on with the extra little digits there because I didn't have that problem before. Come on, get out. So maybe I have a clean on these contacts here and this zebra strip up here it connects to the LCD. The contacts look like they're pretty robust. They look kind of sharp, which is good. This board has nothing on it, literally nothing uh, on this side except for the uh, sockets here. But yeah, really simple little meter, and I think it just slides back in. I'm going to adjust that little zebra strip a little bit. Slides back in this way, underneath there. And then you kind of work it in like that. It's amazing what kind of price you can get these components down to. Literally, if I want to order a bunch of buzzers, I can probably only get like 50 of those buzzers alone for this cost. Negative that way. And there we go. Should be all reassembled properly. And then it hooks on here, down this way. There we go. So we've had a quick look at this thing. Um, what's the verdict then? Honestly, I would say buy it. This thing is great, actually. Um, it's not the best multimeter. If this is going to be your only multimeter, this is probably not the one. But if you've got another multimeter that, that's kind of a, a workhorse already and you can kind of rely on it, it's great. Buy this one as a second multimeter for sure.
if you only have like four, five, six dollars to spend, this is also a good choice. But if you're going to take sort of diagnosing and electricity and electronics seriously, then this this isn't for you. This is a second meter. This is a meter you can easily fit in your pocket, keep in the car, throw in the toolbox. Um, like, for example, I teach uh, automotive students, but I would have no qualms throwing this to them and, uh, and, and seeing what happens because this multimeter is cheap enough to be disposable, but it'll get the job done, especially in a pinch. And I mean, it's fantastic. For the price, if you consider the price in all this, this thing's amazing. Uh, I might try some other Aneg, Aneg um, multimeters because I have been told that um, they do work pretty well and they are fairly accurate. So we're gonna check the legitimacy of those those concerns. Um, if you guys want me to look at other multimeters, put the link or put the, the name in the description and uh, or in the comments below, I should say, and I'll take a look, see if it's feasible. I also have plans on uh, getting my hands on a super accurate multimeter and I'm going to try to validate the voltages that we can see on this thing and I will try to find some really precise trimmed resistors so we can have a sort of like a little precision test rig where we can put multimeters through their paces. So other than that I would say overall if you have access to 23A uh, batteries and you need a second multimeter to carry around with you, I would say get it because the best multimeter is the one you have on you. Thanks again for watching.